What's up everybody? Welcome back to Golf Simulator Videos. We're here today to do a flight scope Mevo Plus review. We're going to take the all new fusion tracking technology and we're going to demonstrate short chipping and putting with the E6 Connect Golf Simulator software. This seems to be one of the most demanded things that people keep requesting here in the channel, shooting me emails, etc., and comments, wanting to see how it's performing. And you know, I figured that we do the same setup as always, uh, seven feet behind the ball is where the GSV Studio allows the FlightScope Mevo Plus to sit. It might be just over seven feet, but it's just about seven feet, and then it's just over 10 feet ball to screen. Um, we have a ball for putting that has no dot, that is what is recommended is no dot. And then we have a ball with the dot. I know a lot of people, they keep asking about the RCT Titleist balls. That's not certified by FlightScope yet, so I'm not using that for any type of demonstrations. Um, cool thing about today is, is I, I like doing this. I've been doing this lately. I'm using my iPad Pro with E6 Connect connected to my 16 by 10 projector. Um, the reason that I'm doing that is, is it's nice to demonstrate what's included with the unit. I have a lot of people ask about the iOS version of E6. So that's what we're using today, all right? so. Uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started. One thing I want to touch on really quick, uh, if you guys are looking to purchase a FlightScope Mevo Plus or any other golf simulator hardware or software, I always put my email uh, pinned to the top of the comments and in the description. Please shoot me an email. I've been helping tons of people lately get their spaces organized, answer a bunch of questions, get you the lowest price available, of course, and the best customer service for whatever component you may be looking for. So I appreciate that as always. And if you haven't had a chance, make sure you subscribe. And as always, comment below. Let me know what you want to see, what you think about this video, questions that you have. All those comments are appreciated. So let's go ahead and go out to the E6 Connect. Uh, let's go to the practice area. All right. Um, I will check real quick the stimp. Um, so if I go to settings here and I go to environment, um, my green speed is set to 10. All right. So my ball here in the studio rolls closer to 11. Um, it's like 10 and a half. So we'll leave it at 10. It seems like that's where a lot of the leagues and stuff are playing. So I'll leave it at 10 for now. I just want you guys to understand that's where it's at. So technically the game might be playing just a tad slower than my turf because it's 10 and a half, but I just want you guys to know what that stimp is. All right. So we'll go to next. We're going to go to the chip and putt area first. All right. Perfect. And we'll go to the 20 foot flat area. It's a great place to start. All right, and then uh, you can actually see the green speed and everything on there now. So I could have just shown you there, but that's okay. And then we'll grab our putter. We have our ball that is, uh, like I said, no dot on it. All right, and we'll place it roughly seven feet from the unit. Now, I've, this is a discussion that is ongoing always in the channel. Um, people always question, why are you not using a putting mat off to the side? Well, I actually did a video doing that and it performed quite well. But if you have a surface that is smooth enough, uh, the Mevo Plus does a good job just reading right off of a hitting area like I have. Now, don't get me wrong. If my angle of attack is, is wrong and I just hit a bad putt, I have just a little bit of a seam here from my soft strike hitting mat to my regular turf. The ball can bounce, and I have seen some questionable results if that ball gets a good bounce. So um, it's kind of up to me to hit a smooth putt. I, you know, I put myself a little bit of risk if I'm playing and I'm using that. But just understand, I mean, this is how I play, and it seems to work quite well overall. So um, 20 feet flat, all right? so. Let's see if we can just hit a few of these, um, you know, obviously straight down there and see if we can get the speed close. So 20 feet. That ball bounced just a little bit. Not too bad. It was just right of my dot and look at it go just right of the cup. Um, a really good putt to start things off. That was a, a great demonstration. Now let's talk about the fusion tracking technology really quick. This is something that was first introduced uh, from FlightScope uh, in their X3 flagship unit. That, uh, you know, it's like a TrackMan size radar, okay? And uh, they're using this built-in camera, okay, to, to actually combine tracking uh, with the camera and the radar. All right, so um, I think that it is something that is obviously vital probably to add some additional you know, tracking for chipping and putting. That's what they were saying. And I'll tell you what, to start off with that first putt like that, it looks like it's working quite well. Now, if you haven't, ooh, I pulled that to the left. Is it gonna read it? <laughs> yes, it is. That was just a pulled putt. Uh, I feel like I have the distance down pretty good. 
You know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it uh, just a tad faster than I normally would because I know that, like I said, my stimp is more of like that 10 and a half, if not, uh, you know, when I was, when I did it, I think it like said 10, six or something. When you do the math, we, we sat here and we rolled a bunch of balls and divided them out. Um, so that, that was impressive that it read that just to the left. Let's see if we can get one straight. I'm going to add just a little bit of speed to this to get us the cup because we left it, you know, kind of just short. That was pretty darn good if I had the speed. Did I leave it just short? Yes, I did. So just short again. Um, but I'll tell you what, it's reading the putts quite well. I just have to get my speed right. Um, I feel like if I wanted to match the turf, I definitely could turn it up to 11. But I'm getting great results so far. We're going to shorten the putt up here in a minute because I know a lot of the leagues play either like 10 foot gimmies or 8 foot gimmies. We'll shorten that up. Make sure you can even make like a 6 foot putt. But let's just hit a couple more of these. I really want to make one of these even though they're rolling really well. So I think that I feel like that speed's going to be just off, just short again. Every time I hit it, I feel like I'm leaving it just a little short. That's all right. These are really good putts. Um, I'll hit this one harder, I promise. So the Fusion tracking is cool, though. The fact that they're using this built-in camera inside the Mevo Plus, which can be used for so many other things, it does swing recording. Okay, um, they're now updating the FS Golf app um, to allow you to use uh, external cameras as well, and you can combine those. I think it's up to three external sources, they said. Um, so that, that's pretty impressive that they're doing that. That update should be coming because they said it was a few weeks from the PGA show. All right, that was just a little harder. There we go, in the hole. All right. That even had a little more juice than uh, if that, that was left or right of the cup. Um, I hit that, you know, a, quite a bit harder. I wanted to get it there, but it's a 20 foot putt. I mean, I, and like I said, I'm playing, you know, a full stimp less. So, all right, perfect examples, perfect examples. Let's get this closer now. Let's go. I think that we should go close. Make sure that you can make like a short, short putt, like, like a six foot putt, you know, like, let's say you were playing five foot gimmies. Like, can, can you play five foot gimmies? Um, you know, with the, the flight scope Mevo plus. So I'm going to hit this. If it's six foot seven, hit it for almost seven or eight feet. You know, my stimps just a little bit slower. Oh, I barely hit it. Is it going to read that? Yeah, I barely hit it. Now that rolled a total of almost seven feet still. So do you need a little more oomph for it to read that? I just, I, I didn't hit that that well. And it, and it, uh, bounced a little bit. That was a little better putt there. There it goes. In the hole. That rolled just over about seven feet or eight feet or so in the sim. So that was a much better example. That first putt, um, you know, take it for what it is. I just knew right when I hit it, it was super soft and kind of bounced a little bit. So um, depending on if you're using a putting mat, you're probably going to get a little better roll on those soft putts. I think if you just give it just enough speed to just get there, you're not going to have a problem. There you go. And I have to remember that, like I said, that stimp, um, this is rolling, you know, a lot faster than, uh, you know, full stimp higher than the turf inside the studio. So, or I should say that the turf inside the studio is faster than the software. So I think that is a lot of good examples. I mean, I'll do one more. I just want to give enough to give everybody confidence that, you know, you could make this little six foot putt. That one was harder. Ooh, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed or not, but I hit that harder than the first couple. Um, so that's, all, that's honestly a good example that you can't just jam it in the cup. Um, you have to have the speed right. So I'm actually kind of glad that we did that. That was another soft one. Will it read the, the soft one? Oh, it, it, that's right on the edge. <laughs> did you see that? That was hilarious. It just kind of like barely uh, stopped. It says in the hole though, so it must have fell in. All right, it said in the hole. It looked like it was almost like caught on the edge. Um, we need to do chipping. So let's go ahead and we're gonna hit in the lower right. We're going to hit the, the ball down there. And what's cool is, is you can just move it, all right, without even exiting the practice facility. So I'm just gonna move it here to like a 34 foot chip. Um, you know, these are chips that are very difficult Sometimes you would get a misread here and there. Um, I am gonna switch to, uh, switch to my ball that has the dot on it. 
because you're only trying to carry this ball. I mean, it's not like you're gonna get much spin out of a ball that's out of the rough. Um, it doesn't matter if it is out of the rough or not really. Um, for if you're only carrying it, you know, 10 feet or so. Um, you know, so you're really, you know, not gonna have a whole lot of spin on this ball. I'm gonna try to carry it maybe like halfway, 15 feet or so, and then let it roll out a little bit. Depends on the undulation of the green you're landing it on too. All right, so I was able to carry that even shorter, it looked like, because that was a pretty soft chip. So it read a very short chip. That, at the very, I mean, look at that, 9.5, which is great because it landed at the bottom of the screen. So we were able to carry a nine foot chip right out of the gate. Let me hit this just a little bit harder now. That should carry a solid 15 or so. Just had to get a little warmed up and see that roll right towards the cup. So that's a really good example. That's exactly what I was thinking I was doing. Yeah, carry 13.4. All right. So a couple great examples to start off there. I mean, let's try to do one more really short one. It, it read that really well, um, like landing it right at the bottom of the screen or so. That was, that was honestly short of the screen. Let's see how far that carried. It only landed, I don't know what that, that was, like maybe nine or so um, where it landed. Carry seven feet, yeah, because it landed just past the dot, which from there, I mean, it's about eight feet, I guess, to the dot because to the screen is about 10 and it's about a foot and a half on, you know, uh, to the screen. So we're looking really good here um, for a very short chip. I'm okay with it even, let's say that it says it carried 6.9 and let's say it actually carried uh, eight inside the studio and it was a foot difference. I'm okay with that for a very short chip on a radar unit indoor and I'm only using seven feet, not, you know, the eight feet that's preferred. Um, good stuff so far. All right, let's try to get this ball a little more in the air. So a little more of a flop shot. Maybe I can flop it and land it about 20 feet or so. Not a full flop, but just a little higher. Oh, that's what you're trying to do right there. That almost went in the hole. And let's see what that carried. I was trying to carry it around 20 with a little more. Look at that, carry 20.6. Seeing really, really good results so far. So now I think what we'll do is we'll actually take the pin and move it a little further out and let's play kind of like a bump and run because this is 55 feet. Um, I mean, the undulation doesn't look crazy at all. Let's say that you're just gonna try to get this to run up to the hole. All right, I'm always facing the dot towards the screen. I may be a little OCD on that. I don't think if it's necessary to get it perfect, but um, that's what's recommended at least. So I'll get this ball a little further back in my stance. I could have warmed up a little bit chipping at least, but try to maybe land it at about 25 or 30 feet and let it roll out. Release, release. <laughs> I probably had a little spin on it because it checked up just a tiny bit. You know, when you're getting a little more, uh, yeah, 26, 32, but look, land at 20 feet and then roll out. And it even had the direction right. Uh, where is that launch direction at? Yeah, just a little bit to the left because I saw it hit a little left of the center point on the screen. So uh, very interested in what you guys think so far of these demonstrations of all the, the chipping and putting. Um, other than that one, really, really soft putt. Um, I mean, we're seeing, seeing really good results so far. So I think that uh, the Fusion technology is obviously uh, you know, a big improvement and it's an included item. Whether you own a, uh, a FlightScope Mevo Plus now or you're buying one, it is a firmware update that they're including. That one was even better. That's what I was getting that release. I mean, it's exactly what I was trying to do on that chip and it's reading really, really well. Now, notice I have the Pro Package and I didn't even think about that because I was doing the, the putting before, not really thinking of, of uh, path and face and everything, but I actually have, um, let's purposely get the face and the path doing something. 
and then I'll show you guys, I have the pro package, which shows up now in the data tiles inside of E6. So we'll kind of, kind of piggyback a little bit. I did a full pro package video that you should check out in the channel. All right, that's the previous video uh, from when I'm posting this one. Make sure you check that out. We used FS Golf, the native app, to FlightScope Mevo Plus. So, you know, make sure you check that out. But uh, yeah, you're getting all the club data here in E6. So I'm gonna try to do something a little weird here. I'll try to hit this maybe a little bit outside in and, uh, you know, get my club face um, probably a little bit open is what it will show. That's what I was trying to do. I kind of came across the ball a little bit. You obviously can't fade it, but you can see, you know, the direction of the ball and what was happening there. And then you can see I was 2.4 out to in and the club face was just a little bit closed. So if I would have opened that up more at a dress, then that ball would have taken off straight and I still would have had that, you know, kind of side, you know, cut from my wedge. Um, how interesting is that? I'll see if I can open that face up. This is not a shot that I normally hit. I'm just trying to give you guys a really good example if you're working on things. So I'm going to open the face up a little bit and I'm laying the wedge down. So this would be really tough for it to read. Let's see if I can do that one more time. Yeah, I think the face is still, I mean, that wasn't bad, a little harder. Um, See if I got the face at least closer on that one. Not an easy, uh, easy shot for me to hit. 8.1 or 8.8 .8 uh, outside in and 1.1 open. You know, I'm, I'm coming across the ball and the face was just a tiny bit open at the time. You could see it was closer to the pin as well. I'm getting a lot of spin, you know, coming across and it's reading the side spin correctly at 8.05 the way that I'm coming across the ball with my wedge. Really good kind of a piggyback example there of the pro package with E6. You know, it wasn't the intention of the video, but I'm showing, being able to show you guys all the different shipping and putting, um, you know, with the Fusion technology. On top of that, the pro package. So um, really cool results right out of the gate. Um, this is, I've, I've just started testing this. I've had a lot going on. I'm working on uh, here at the GS GSV studio. So obviously stay tuned as always. There's a lot more coming. I want you guys to comment below what you'd like to see. I'll try to get to that as soon as I can, but yeah, definitely stay tuned. There'll be a lot more coming to the channel as we work through things here, test different things and, uh, you know, have good content to bring to you guys, not trying to release anything out there, you know, that uh, is repetitive or an unnecessary, always trying to bring good quality content. Um, you know, let me know what you think of this video and what you'd like to see in the future. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned. We'll talk to you soon.